We're going to set up and solve a simple dynamic optimization problem, first with Excel and then with Python Gecko. Uh, you can also do it with MATLAB as well, and there's some instructions on how to do that. Okay, so this is a simple optimization problem where we're going to minimize x2, which is our second variable, at the final time. And we're going to do that by adjusting the values of u. Those are our decision variables. And we're going to be subject to a couple differential equations. The first one is just dx1 dt equals u. So if u equals, you know, steps from 0 to 1, then we would expect x1 to have a slope of 1. Okay, so that's our u value and that's our x. It just says that the slope of x equals u. Our second differential equation is that it's the sum of the squares of x1 and u are the derivative of x2. Now, these are always going to be positive, and so we're always going to have an increase in x2. But what we want to try to do is find the values of u that are going to give us a minimum final value of x2. Okay, so let me go ahead and just clean this up a little bit, and then we'll uh, describe how to solve this first with Excel. There's a couple additional lines here. It just means that the initial conditions for my x1 and x2 are 1 and 0, respectively. And I'm going to go, you know, start from 0 and go to a final time of 1. Now, if I'm going to solve this in Excel, I'm going to need to discretize this differential equation. And so let's just do dx1 delta x1 over delta t. And that's going to be x1 at time point i plus 1 minus x1 at time point i divided by delta t equals u. Okay, and then I'm just going to solve for this one. This is my next time step. So this is an Euler's method for solving differential equations. And then uh, that gives me x1 i plus 1 equals u times delta t. Um, and I'm going to use the i minus 1 value for that u. And then I'm going to have added x1 i. Okay, I guess that's not i minus 1, it's just i for the u. Okay, so I have um, this now. I'm going to just plug this formula into Excel. So the very first thing I want to do is just create some columns for myself. Uh, this one is just going to be time. And I'll just come up with a couple points here, 0, 0 0.1. And then if you just drag down by holding this right box, it'll increment for you. So those are my time points between 0 and the final time. I'm going to have my u and then my x1 and my x2. And let's just do 0 0.5 here. OK, just have 0 0.5 everywhere. I have my initial conditions of 1 and 0. OK, so those are my two initial conditions that were given right down here. OK, now what I want to do is just use this Euler's method. And so it just is going to equal the prior u value times the delta x. And the delta x is just going to be the difference in time points. OK, it could be 0 0.1. If I just want to put 0 0.1 in there, or I could do the difference between those two. And then I need to add in the prior value of x1. OK, so there is my uh, formula. I'm just going to copy that one down, double click there. And you can see that with a slope of, you know, if I start at 1, OK, I'm starting at 1, and I have a slope of uh, 0 0.5. Then after one time uh, sample, I'm going to get up to a value of 1.5. And so you see that in the final cell here, I'm at 1.5. So that makes sense. Simple differential equation, just solved it with Euler's method. Let's go on to the next one now. This is going to be our second differential equation. And I'll just use a finite difference as well. OK, plus u squared. OK, and then I'm going to use the same Euler's method. i plus 1 equals x1 i squared plus u i squared. OK, and that's going to be multiplied by delta t. And then I'm going to add in 
the prior time step there. Let's go ahead and program that in Excel. And so now this is going to be equal to the prior x1 value squared plus uh, the prior u value. And I'm going to square that. And I'll put some parentheses around it. Oops. Uh, no. Okay, I'll do that myself. Okay, and then multiplied by 0 0.1, or if you just want to put in the time steps there. Okay, I'm going to put in the delta t, and then add in my prior x2 value. Okay, that's there's my formula, and I'm just going to fill this one down. And I see that equals right now 1.77. So this is the value that I'm going to try to minimize by changing everything that's in uh, these cells, okay, in the red cells. So I'm going to try to minimize here, okay, by changing these values. And let's just create a plot just so we can see this. I'm going to insert just a scatter plot. Okay, and let me get rid of that title. And I'll make this just a little bit more compact. Okay, so there's my, um, you know, I want to minimize this last dot right there. Okay, so in order to do this in Excel, I would use a solver. I go to Data Solver. Um, if you don't have that available, you just need to go to Options and then go to Add-ins. Okay, and click Excel Add-ins. Just make sure Solver Add-in is selected. If you do that and you select Data, and you select Solver, it'll bring up the Solver dialog box. So select my objective, which is going to be this final parameter right here. I want to minimize that by changing these cells. Okay, all of those. Unselect the Make Unconstrained Variables Non-Negative, and then click Solve. Okay, so it was 1.77 before. It says it's successfully satisfied. Now I got 0 0.79, so I was able to minimize that. Now this final value right here, it actually doesn't matter. You can change it to anything. It isn't going to affect uh, the solution. So if you just want to set that to 0, that's actually one that it really doesn't matter. Okay, so if I had finer discretization here, if I had you know 0 0.01 time points, then this would give me a better, more accurate solution. Okay, but I've uh, optimized now. I've dynamically optimized the values of u in order to get a minimum on my x2. Okay, so now I want to show how to do this with Gecko as well. Gecko is a Python package for dynamic optimization. And uh, if you just open up a text editor, okay, so this is going to be the same as the Excel. Um, but now just with uh, the Gecko package. Okay, so um, I'm just going to import NumPy. Okay, let me make this, uh, let's see, let me see if I can just make this just a little bit uh, bigger here. View, zoom, zoom in. Okay. So that would be, uh, I'm just going to make this just a little bit bigger again. It's like I can mouse up. If I hit the control key, uh, zoom in. Let me see if I can hit the control key. Uh, that's not, oh, there it goes. Okay, good. Okay, so there's NumPy and matplotlib. And then the other thing that I need is Gecko. So if you don't have Gecko, you can also get it from the command prompt. You can do pip install gecko and that should go out and get the latest version of gecko for you okay i've already uh, satisfied those requirements so it's not going to install anything for me okay um, i'm going to create a new gecko model and then i have a number of time points that i want now in the excel one we only had 11. this one we're going to do 101. Okay, now my time, my m dot time, is going to be equal to linearly spaced values between 0 and 1. And I want to have those 101 time points in there instead of the default, which I believe is 50. 
Okay, uh, variables. I'm going to create some variables now. Uh, x1, x2, and u. And I can give those initial conditions as well. Okay, so value equals 1, value equals 0. And then I'm just going to have a value equal negative uh, point, 0 0.75. You can have whatever you want in there. Um, it'll just show up as that would be the initial point in the plot. Okay, then I have my equations. I do that. I have two equations, two differential equations. I'm just going to put that first one in there with x1.dt, and that's going to be my differential. And don't forget the double equal sign there. I also have my second one, which is x2dt. And, uh, you know, in this case, you notice you don't need to do the discretization like the Euler's method. This package will take care of that for you. Okay, now my objective function. I have my objective. It always minimizes this value. And I'm going to have the x2 value. Now, you might be thinking, I don't want to minimize x2 everywhere, only at the final point. So one thing we can do is set up a new parameter p. It's going to be equal to zeros everywhere with the 101 time points. But just the last one we're going to have set equal to 1. Okay, and then I have a new parameter, like I declared a variable. But this one's going to be a parameter that's going to use those p values for the initialization. Then what I can do is just have x2 times final. And then that means I'm only minimizing the value at the final point. Okay, so that would be like if I came back to Excel and I created a new one called final, and that was zero everywhere, and then just one right at the end, and then my objective, okay, equals final times uh, x2. Okay, so it's just going to be multiplied together. And then you'll see if I add all those up, I just have the final value. Okay, so that's what I'm doing in uh, basically in, in Gecko to make sure I just have the very final value. You know, I could put a 1 in there wherever I want to try to achieve a certain objective along the way as well. Okay, and then the rest of this is just going to be setting up some options like iMode 6, that's dynamic optimization. Uh, that's going to be like the model predictive control or forward looking uh, solves. Okay, and then I have a solve command there. And um, then I'm going to just create the figure and be able to plot x1, x2, and the U value, I'll give those different symbols and colors, and then have a legend there as well with time label for my X axis, and then value, and then I'll show the plot. Okay, the other thing I can do is if I want to solve locally without the internet connection, I can do remote uh, equals false, and it will solve locally instead of uh, to the public default server. That only works for Windows right now, but we're adding Linux uh, in a little bit. Okay, so I'll just show it with the uh, public server option. And let me run this, and then let's take a look at the result and see if we got close to what it gave us in the um, Excel. Okay, so this is going to run. It's, um, it's solved in this time right here, so just a fraction of a second. And there you can see uh, the response. I'll just move this over so we can compare it with the Excel, and it looks very similar. Okay, so right there is my final x2 value that I'm trying to minimize. And if I just bring up the uh, command here, the final objective value is listed uh, right here. If I wanted to get that final objective value uh, explicitly, I could do print, okay, objective, and then add the string, and then this would be x2, negative 1. Okay, and that would um, be able to print my uh, final value of x2. 
So let's try that. Okay, so it says there's my objective right there, but you can also see it right here as well. Okay, and there's the uh, plot. Now the other thing that you can do, um, you know, when we're doing the modeling, typically we have one variable for every uh, differential equation. The other thing that we can do is declare this as a manipulated variable, a parameter, and then turn its status on. Okay, so I'm going to declare this one as an MV instead, and uh, and then do u dot status equals one. So that turns its status on, and that should do the same thing as declaring it as a variable. But then we have additional tuning that we can put in there, such as uh, d cost. Okay, so or other parameters that um, you know help us tune this as well. Okay, so I'm just going to solve it one more time with status equal one there, and we should have the same solution. Okay, so in this case, we declared it as a parameter and then turned, made it a degree of freedom with the u status equals one, and in the other case, we just included it as a variable. Okay, so this is uh, you know the very first of several dynamic optimization benchmark problems. I'll just show you how to navigate to get there. So go to the dynamic optimization course and then scroll down to um, here on the right, you'll see benchmarks. Okay, so this is just the first of a few um, and you'll see additional uh, benchmark problems. These are optimal control problems. Um, you know, very uh, fairly simple, you know, two to four equations and their solutions there in MATLAB and Python also put the Gecko uh, solutions there as well for you. Okay, so this is, these are exercises to just kind of help you start from scratch, build dynamic optimization problems. Okay, let me just show the one B here. Okay, you do have an X1 at t final equals one. We're just going to add that constraint in. Okay, let me move this off to the side. Okay, actually it's on this one, just down below. Okay, in this case we just have this additional constraint. I'll just show you that one since this one is uh, actually very close uh, to that solution. I'm just going to add an additional constraint there which says the x1 at time final has to equal 1. So if I come here, you know, kind of like I did on the objective, I'm just going to add a new equation. And uh, here it'll be m dot equation, and then I only want to satisfy this at the final condition, and that will be x1 minus 1 uh, equals 0. Okay, and I do that, I don't do final times x1 equals 1, because then if I do 0 times 0 equals 1, uh, it's going to say it, it isn't satisfied. So I'm just going to add that uh, final condition in there, okay, and then I can run it one more time. It's going to change the solution, make the objective function just a little bit worse, but you'll see you know, right here at the very end that uh, x1 equals 1 at the beginning and the end. So that changed the U profile and made the objective 0.92. So having that additional constraint in there made the objective function worse. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you know, it hopefully uh, helps you understand how to build a gecko optimization problem, a dynamic optimization problem and uh, you know, just showing how it was done in Excel and in Python as well.